Hello, everybody. Um, today, I will be presenting uh, our work on active flash uh, for towards energy efficient in situ scientific data analysis on extreme scale machines. This work has been done in collaboration with Oak Ridge National Lab and Northeastern University. I put my co authors uh, nice photos. Uh, Sudarshan, uh, Shaosang, and Peter are here. So if you see them, you can catch them in the hallway. Um, let me begin with, you know, so this is a cloud uh, presentation. So it comes with a disclaimer that if something goes wrong, you know that everything in the cloud doesn't work, but hopefully everything will work today. So let me give you some background uh, about uh, this work. Uh, we are uh, pro uh, proposing active flash approach for in situ scientific data analysis, and this Work is modeled based on a supercomputer uh, in ORNL, Oak Ridge National Lab, which actually hosts Titan supercomputing supercomputer. Uh, our work specifically models Jaguar. Uh, that was the supercomputer that uh, was there when we uh, did this study. And the conclusions here or the insights here mostly apply to any system. It's pretty generic. So let's look into how scientific discovery actually happens. Scientific discovery is a two-step process. First, you run the scientific simulation on nodes, simulation nodes, and then you produce some data on, on that data. Some grad student goes and digs in and does some analysis, and that's what leads to scientific discovery. So it is a two-step process, and the process, the step that we are mostly focused here or interested in is data analysis and uh, visualization for scientific data. So let me introduce how traditional uh, scientific simulation is done. There are uh, thousands of nodes, uh, I have put, this is a toy example, so there's a couple of simulation nodes here. Uh, they produce a lot of data, it goes through the interconnect, not shown here for simplicity, and finally it stores to a storage system uh, to a parallel file system. Okay. These, uh, what kind of applications actually run on these uh, such extreme scale machines? These are large scale leadership computing applications which Department of Energy is interested in, and they lead to a lot of scientific discovery and advancing the state of the art. They are astrophysics, physics applications, climate modeling, combustion, fusion applications. Uh, and if you see this uh, chart, it shows a couple of applications and how much data they produce uh, per second, uh, per node. Uh, there are two kinds of data. One is analysis data, and uh, other one is checkpoint data. Checkpoint data is mostly for uh, recovering from failures for these uh, large scale machines, and analysis data is the one on which we actually do analysis. Okay? They may look a small couple of kilobytes per second per node, but if you do calculate just for, for example, GTC, it produces 30 terabyte of output data per hour at a scale for an 18,000 node machine. So, how do we do then analysis on this scientific data? Right? So, traditional way of doing is following. You store all the data to parallel file system, and then you have an offline data analysis cluster, which may be on-site in the supercomputing super center itself, or off-site to some other uh, university or nation, uh, other national lab. You read all the data, and you do analysis on them, for example, regular expression matching, statistics collection, clustering, compression, et cetera. And this is how traditionally the scientific data analysis is done today. What we are interested in is following. What are the challenges? What are the problems with these, with these current approaches? And how do we solve them? Offline approach to data analysis involves multiple rounds of I.O. as just, we just saw it. It reads and writes, and worse if it is off-site. This causes excessive data moment, excessive I.O., and extra energy cost. The good news or the bad news is that energy cost for data moment at XI scale is actually going to be of the same order of computation cost, if not more. So we really need to care about not just the computation, but the data transfer and how much energy is associated with that. Another alternative to solve this problem is to actually use these simulation nodes itself for doing data analysis. Unfortunately, that's not preferred uh, in typical supercomputing setting because uh, users pay a lot of money for CPU allocation cost and they do not want to uh, spend that money on something which is not flop intensive. They want to run flop intensive tasks on these supercomputing supercomputers. 
right? So this was problem challenges. So what do we do about it? Today I will you know, introduce active flash approach for in situ scientific data analysis. Let me uh, revisit the traditional setup of uh, scientific simulation. And this is what we propose. We will perform, our proposal is to perform active computation on SSDs. Some of these simulation nodes will be equipped with SSDs. Okay? As you can see, the middle two have it. And all the simulation nodes will send their data to their nearest node, which has SSD. Scientific data analysis will be performed on these SSD controllers in parallel with the scientific simulation without affecting it. And this is very critical. We have to perform this uh, data analysis on the SSD controller without actually affecting the simulation, the main simulation. And it goes in parallel with it in the background. And finally, it is stores to parallel file system. One term which I will be using uh, frequently and I will revisit again, but uh, staging ratio. Staging ratio here is four. Staging ratio simply means how many compute nodes go to one SSD. Here you can see four of them actually go to one. So it's four is to one, and that's why staging ratio is just four. Before I go into more detail of active flash proposal, what really, I want to cover what really uh, enables this, or why do we think it has potential in future? There are multiple enabling trends. SSDs are actually now being adopted in supercomputers for better IO throughput and storage capability, not for active computation. Active computation is our proposal. If you look at Subame or Gordon supercomputers, they already have SSDs. SSD controllers are actually becoming very, uh, you know, increasingly powerful. They are multi-cores, low processor, low processor cores, thanks to Moore's law. And scientific simulations, scientific simulations usually have I/O. Their I/O is bursty in nature, meaning they perform computation for let's say a certain amount of time, an hour, and then they do output. Uh, then they do I/O, and then they again go back to computation and after some time they again perform I.O. So you have a lot of time between two I.O. periods where you can do background job and this is what we look to exploit in active flash proposal. In situ analysis uh, inherently is more energy efficient because it reduces the data moment. You are doing the computation near to the storage and not you know, transferring back and forth again as opposed to offline analysis. One alternative is uh, that we consider in paper, and I will briefly talk about it here also, is analysis node approach, where you can order extra nodes just for doing scientific data analysis. These are different from simulation nodes. Uh, we should note that they cost extra money. They also cost extra installation cost, right? And they also need to be uh, into the interconnect of supercomputers, so that needs to be modified. There's a lot of overhead associated with it. But let's uh, you know, model this. We will model this and compare it against active flash. But data analysis essentially is performed on these dedicated compute nodes. And, but this is typically not preferred in supercomputing super settings simply because we do not want to pay for uh, these compute nodes and not use them for uh, flop-intensive jobs. Right? Again, the staging ratio is four. Staging ratio means how many uh, data analysis nodes you have given, you know, uh, uh, compute nodes. So there are four compute nodes or simulation node that go to just one analysis node. All right, so given this background, um, let's revisit and see what questions we will ask and what answers can we expect from this work. First, if SSDs are deployed, with only I.O. performance in mind, okay, no active computation uh, in picture, then is active computation even feasible? If we just deployed SSD just for doing higher I.O. throughput, is active computation feasible? By that I mean, will additional SSD provisioning be required? Will we need extra SSDs to support this? Will active computation slow down the main simulation nodes? And finally, how much energy and cost saving can we expect from an active flash approach? And compare that to offline approach and analysis node approach. This was the brief overview of whole active flash approach. Let's dig into uh, active computation feasibility. First, I want to 
cover how do we model SSD deployment without active computation support? That is to say, how many SSDs do we need really just for higher IO throughput or other HPC requirements? So simulation nodes store output data to SSD equipped nodes, and no data analysis is being performed right now. There are multiple constraints even to model this. For example, capacity. NF SSDs need to be there to sustain one output bust buffer. Uh, bust. Suppose after one hour, everyone produces, you know, total data is being produced is 30 terabyte, then you need to have enough SSDs to actually hold that. Performance, high IO bandwidth to SSD space. You need to have enough SSDs that they can provide bandwidth, which is at least greater than parallel file systems bandwidth, otherwise the whole purpose of deploying SSD is defeated. Also, fast restart from application checkpoints. Once you fail, you need to recover fast enough, so there is another constraint on that. Write durability, SSD write endurance limits, you know, is another constraint. Recall that a staging ratio is how many simulation nodes share one common SSD. And a staging ratio is determined by the most restrictive constraint. So there are a couple of constraints that we covered, and there is math which I will not go in detail, but you can see there's a capacity, there are multiple factors, capacity one of one SSD, over provisioning factor, how many checkpoints you want to restore bandwidth, then restart um, requirement, then write endurance requirement, and you can take the minimum of uh, that. that. That's what is needed to be supported. So model Jaguar supercomputer consists of 18,000 nodes. So a staging ratio of 10 means 1,800 SSD. This is just to give an idea when I say staging ratio of 10 or 30, what does it mean? How many SSDs are we really buying? So we did that analysis on uh, the model, <coughs> and it shows for different applications, Chimera, Vulkan, Pop, S3D, and GTC, and so on, the numbers which are actually in gray says this is the minimum constraint. You have to have at least the staging ratio has to have, for example, 18 in S3D ca case. So you need to have S3D, uh, 18 staging ratio means 18 compute nodes to go to one SSD. If you look at this, uh, except Chimera, which is really well, which really needs one SSD per node or node local storage, we cannot probably deploy that because of the high cost of SSD. So staging ratio of 10, 10 seems to work well for all applications except Chimera. So 10 seems to be a good number which will support uh, most of the applications, and that means we need to order 1,800 SSDs. Now that we have covered that, and model tells us that this is the SSD requirement you need to have for IO throughput. Now let's ask, can we actually support active computation given this analysis? So how do we model active computation feasibility? Let me remind you that data analysis is performed on the SSD controller, so to, for it to be feasible and for it to not slow down the simulation node, you need to finish it before next data, uh, next data arrives or next wave of data arrives. I will show you a more animation uh, to make it more clear. There are simulation applications, for example, Chimera, Vulkan that I covered, and there are data analysis kernels. One thing that we note that is given for any application, some analysis kernels can be supported and some cannot be. For example, for Vulkan, maybe PC can be supported, or, but more compute intensive, for example, clustering may not be supported. In other words, relatively less compute intensive kernels are better suited. For example, regex matching for active computation. It is intuitive because if it is less compute intensive, then it is likely to finish the analysis on the data produced and push it to PFS, parallel file system, before the next wave of data arrives. I will also use the term high comp uh, compute throughput, and when something is less compute intensive, I say it is high compute throughput because within less time, within one second, you can actually process uh, a big amount of data or more uh, MB per second. This looks simple, but it is also dependent on multiple factors, for example, at what rate simulation is producing the data. If it is producing at a very f high rate, probably active flash cannot keep up and cannot support uh, any of the analysis kernels. And if it is very slow, if the production rate is very slow, then active flash may support all of the analysis kernels. It also depends on the staging ratio, for example. If there are too many compute nodes relying on just one SSD, 
uh, that SSD may be overwhelmed and may not support some of the analysis kernels. IO bandwidth and so on, so we have a um, you know, mathematical model for that, and I won't go in the detail of that model, but intuitively speaking, an analysis kernel needs to meet a certain threshold compute throughput to be placed on SSD controller. It is the equation which has multiple factors. For example, you can see staging ratio, bandwidth internals of SSD characteristics, uh, the interconnect, and what is the uh, output frequency, and so on. But what does intuitively it mean? For example, let me stop this for a second and clarify the things that are moving here. If I say there is a small um, yellow dot, that means it's the data that is being produced by the simulation per second. And you will perform the SSD uh, data analysis kernel on, on the controller. So red means it, it is high compute intensive. Since you are producing very little data, as I will show you in the animation, since we are producing very little data, we can afford to have a very compute-intensive analysis kernel to run. If we are producing too much data, then the analysis kernel that we can run cannot be that intensive. This is just a toy example, and let's play this. So it goes there. And then you have a lot of time, uh, actually, to process this, so it is taking longer because it is more compute intensive, and after that, it immediately goes. Compare that to this, a lot of data, but we don't have much time. So the, compute the analysis kernel this time was less compute intensive, and hence it really finished fast, and it was high compute throughput. For example, clustering is more compute intensive, less compute throughput, and finding a statistical um, mean or median is more or less compute intensive, but more compute throughput. We will again cover this concept. So let's see what do we really have this uh, inequality that compute throughput that needs to be there for an analysis kernel for given an application. Remember S3D, S3D is a uh, leadership computing application, which actually, as you change the staging ratio, the analysis kernel that you can replay, uh, that you can place is getting higher and higher. So it needs to be less compute intensive. In other words, the area where data analysis kernel space can lie is above that bar, which is the green area. And if the compute throughput for that analysis kernel is any lower than that, then you cannot place that. Of course, you can place it, but it will hurt the simulation performance. For example, let's look at GZIP. GZIP is analysis kernel, uh, and obviously it's constant. It has nothing to do with staging ratio. It is a constant throughput uh, given an input. When the staging ratio is less than 30, it actually can be placed because the compute throughput, the megabytes per second that it, the uh, data crunching happens is good enough to be placed for active SSD, active flash. But as soon as the staging ratio gets higher than 30, this blue line is below the bar, below this bar. And that means if we place it, it will hurt the simulation. To make it more clear, for example, mean. Mean is even less compute intensive, or in other words, high compute throughput. And hence, at even high staging ratio, you have a lot of, uh, uh, you can support mean for all the staging ratios shown here. For S3D, uh, for K-means, for example, th that is another analysis kernel which is more compute intensive, the staging ratio is even lower than actually GJ because it's more compute intensive, hence SSD will get wo overwhelmed very soon at a lower staging ratio. So we plot a couple of uh, more analysis kernels and show that you know at different uh, ratios what happens. And if you see at 10, probably other than K-means, you can support everything else for S3D. We can actually plot all other uh, applications, simulation applications, for example, Vulkan, POP, GTC, and Gyro. And as we see, most of the analysis kernels are above it. Uh, for example, at 10, staging ratio 10, maybe you cannot support uh, k-means for some of the applications. So what is the takeaway from here? Most data analysis kernels can be placed on SSD controllers without actually degrading the performance. 
Second, additional SSDs are actually not required for supporting in situ data analysis on SSDs beyond what is needed for sustaining the I.O. throughput. As we just saw, 10, staging ratio 10 was enough for supporting most of that, and staging ratio 10 was what was calculated for sustaining the I.O. throughput. Finally, we can do the same thing for analysis node, and this is the graph that I showed you for active flash. Obviously, this looks better for analysis node because they are more beefy cores, so you can support most of the applications. But here's the thing, finding is, analysis node approach is feasible at higher staging ratios compared to active flash, but it comes at additional infrastructure cost. With that, we'll move to energy cost, energy and cost saving analysis. I will not go in the detail of the uh, modeling of energy and cost, but roughly we model it after Samsung PM830 SSD. And total energy cost com consists of multiple components. Similarly, for offline and analysis node, we were very optimistic. We modeled after Intel Core i7 processors and assumed it ideal when not doing any data analysis. No cooling, assembling, or installation cost has been considered for this, just for being uh, overly optimistic for competitive approaches. We'll show that even just the SSD deployment on x-axis you see different analysis kernels and on y-axis you see different energy expense. Just deploying the SSD, doing no data analysis actually saves some cost because the I.O. throughput has increased and hence simulation takes less time to run, hence you save some energy. Deploying active flash on top of it incurs some more cost but is good enough this is just one application pop. There are other applications have the same thing. Offline approach incurs a lot because of the data transfer cost and because of the uh, idle time that it takes during uh, redundant I.O. And same is the case with uh, analysis node approach. There are other applications, they have the similar trend. So finally, the energy cost we do for five applications continuously for two years and we can see that active flash approach actually saves some energy bills and pays some cost of the SSD. And it is feasible for all applications, mostly for a staging ratio 10, but not at higher. Analysis node is feasible at higher, but has higher cost. So active flash is more energy and, and cost efficient than other approaches in many cases. That, to verify this, uh, we also build a prototype on open SSD platform. The prototype uh, demonstrates the viability of our approach. It only requires uh, changes in the FTL, but no hardware changes. And it is preemption-based scheduling, meaning if there's an I.O. coming and you don't have any multi-core uh, multi left to do work, you can schedule, pre-schedule, preempt it. S please see the paper for detailed uh, evaluation results. Uh, essentially, you have a host which sends some commands to your flash, it picks up the data from a certain place, performs the analysis, and analysis is embedded in the FTL. This, finally, the conclusion of this uh, talk is that we verified that active computation is actually a feasible approach, and it enables energy efficient in C2 data analysis in supercomputing setting. And in most cases, it doesn't require extra SSDs than what you need just for I.O. purposes. An active flash it may even help cut the SSD deployment cost by reducing the SSD bill. And finally, we also showed that uh, with open SSD, you actually can, uh, it is a viable approach. Thank you very much, and I have one minute left. Okay. So. I will be happy to take any questions. Uh, since I had one minute left, uh, this is the favorite question that my wife has, that why fast is every year on, or, you know, on Valentine's Day. Uh, I will convey to her that that was changed and I am not the one who can change it, but it has changed. And hopefully one iPad mini is enough to make up for that. She is doing benchmarks. She can't remotely work. It's, she's not in computer science. So that's the worst news. <laughs> uh, Dave Anderson, I was just curious if you had actually looked at any SSDs to see if they had the kind of processing power you'd need to do these kinds of things. Do you need 64-bit processors, and how much RAM do you need? 
I just wonder if the SSDs had the kind of resources you actually need to accomplish this. Yeah, that's a good question. So Samsung PM830, uh, thanks to Moore's law, is actually getting more and more uh, uh, compute power. And actually, Samsung PM830 has three core controller uh, and is uh, powerful enough. This is my timer. Uh, it's powerful enough, and uh, given Moore's law, the way multi-cores are actually going, I believe that uh, the SSD controller should be even more powerful in near future. So there would be more cores, and we can uh, you know, do data analysis or other activities on these controllers. Hey, Song Tiang from uh, Wayne State University. A uh, question I have is, um, you know, the space on the SSD may be allocated by a local file system and uh, the data are also managed by the file system, right? So for the code you run on the SSD, it also needs to understand uh, the file system, how the data is uh, actually uh, placed on the system. So uh, your code is, uh, so file system is also running, uh, run by your, uh, you know, SSD? Yeah, file system is, is SSD is controlling that, but uh, we place the data in a certain place so that SSD controller knows where the data is and it can pick from there. And the analysis kernel is within FTL, so it can actually perform that analysis on that data and store again at a pre-specified place. Actually, the implementation also has optional variable field where if the analysis kernel is more uh, complex, then you can specify other things that controller can read and actually do the analysis. And it can also judge if there is uh, I.O. coming in, then it can preempt this uh, data analysis task. So you mean SSD run uh, file system code? Yeah, for, the f uh, for that one. But the host is the one which actually uh, uh, you know, communicates, or host is the one which actually says command that you know, I need to perform data analysis on this one. So if uh, uh, the, the, the data on SSD is also managed by distributed or parallel file system, uh, so the data on a single SSD may not, um, in the, uh, like, I mean, uh, all the data that can be processed independently by the individual SSD, right? This data stripe over multiple SSD. Right, so, so it goes to the node local, it, is, uh, it, it processed there, and if uh, you need to do across the SSDs, then you need to deploy a, a maybe MapReduce kind of framework where uh, other SSDs can actually coordinate to uh, perform more analysis or you know, do a reduction operation on all the data that has been analyzed. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's thank our speaker.